You want to learn how to start a smart home? You're in the right place. This is episode number one. Welcome to the One Hour Smart Home Podcast. Helping you make your life better. Using automation and technology. With your host, James Both. Hello and welcome. This is your host, James Both, with the one hour smarthome.com, bringing you everything you need to know to automate your home, your life, as well as smart home product reviews, the latest smart home industry news, and exclusive interviews with smart home industry experts and smart home company founders. This is episode number one, and today we're going to go through the four best devices to start your smart home with. And the four things that you should consider when making a smart home device purchase. But before that, I have one ask for you. If you enjoy this podcast, please subscribe or visit us at onehoursmarthome.com for more smart home information. It's subscribe to our email list. All right, now let's get started with our episode. So we're going to cover the four pillars of a smart home and what is important for you as well as the four devices that we recommend that you implement when starting out a smart home. So the four pillars of a smart home we've boiled down to convenience, controllability, energy management, and security. When you're deciding what device to implement in your smart home, it needs to be all about convenience. Because if you have to go into an app, go through three different screens, and then you can't control your lights, your front door, or your thermostat, That's not a smart home. That's a dumb home. Smart homes are supposed to make your life easier and more convenient. So that's the number one thing that you want to think about when you're implementing a device. Now, the next part of this controllability ties into the convenience factor. So as time goes on, smart homes originally required a hub. They required an app. And then all of a sudden, Amazon Alexa, Google Play came onto the scene And now you can control your home like Tony Stark with your voice. So controllability and convenience kind of tie together. Being able to control your home with your voice is the most convenient way to be able to interface with your home because we're on our phones enough anymore. There's no reason that you need to go through an app when you can just say, Alexa, Turn off the lights. Alexa, set my thermostat to 72 degrees. So when you look at controllability in a device, you really want something that will integrate with voice in the long term. A lot of devices come out and they may not initially integrate with voice, but as long as that manufacturer has a roadmap or a path to integrate with voice in the future, that's really, really important. And the third pillar is energy management, which encompasses both energy efficiency and energy savings. So here you want to look at it both at the device level as well as the grid level. So on a device level, you want to look how a device is going to help you save energy. So for a smart thermostat, that might be turning your heating or cooling down while you are at work. And the smart thermostat will do that usually from a motion sensor built into the thermostat or by using your GPS location on your phone to know that you're at work and it can turn up or down the heating or cooling to help you save energy while no one is there at the house. The other thing that you're going to find with the smart thermostat devices is that you're going to adjust your temperature to a more accurate or a more comfortable level all the time. So before when you might have left your heat go to 75 degrees or 73 degrees, when really it should have been at 70 degrees, but you just didn't want to get up from the couch, now you're going to be able to turn it down from your phone or tell Alexa or Google Home to do it. So you're going to help save yourself some energy there. Now at the grid level, there's a couple things you need to look at here. Because on the grid level, there are a fair amount of energy efficiency incentives that utilities provide to help the grid save energy. For instance, here in Chicago, ComEd has a energy efficiency program where they give you a $100 rebate on a smart thermostat, which can really help offset the cost of one of these energy efficiency devices such as a smart thermostat. 
Also, there are incentive programs which are called demand response programs, which basically help the utility grid even out the load on the utility grid to make it more efficient. So they're not producing excess energy and they're not producing too little energy. So these demand response programs, which we're going to cover in depth on a later episode, incentivize you to join the program by offering you a rebate on your utility bill if you agree to turn down your energy usage when there is an event where the grid is overloaded. So usually this happens by either a text message or email notification, or they can do it automatically if you give them control of your smart thermostat or smart lighting system. Over time, these devices that incorporate energy management are going to help you save both energy and money. Look at it as investment in your home that's going to pay off year over year, regardless of the fluctuations in gas prices, electricity prices, you're still going to be saving energy. So it's a net benefit to you, but it also does something good for the environment because the less energy that you consume is the less energy that has to be produced. So the more energy we save, the better for everyone. And the fourth pillar of the smart home is security. You can kind of lump safety in there as well, but we're going to look at both active and passive measures. So active measures are those things which have an action that help makes you more secure. So an alarm sounding when somebody opens a door or a motion sensor or a glass break sensor, that is an active measure. You could even consider a smart lock an active measure because you can set them to auto locking mode. And then passive measures are like security cameras. So some of them have two-way communication, which maybe you could consider an active measure. But for the most time, a camera is just sitting there recording and there's not really an activity that they're doing to prevent a crime from happening. You're recording the crime, but there's not much that you can do about it. So when we look at these, Security is really important because when you're thinking about a smart home, how are you going to use it to, one, prevent crime uh, with their active measures? And then with the passive measures, how is that preventing crime from a standpoint of deterrence, such as a security camera deterring a thief from robbing your home or doing something malicious because they know they are on video and there's a much higher probability that they will get caught. So now that we've kind of explained to you these four pillars of smart home and what you're looking for in the devices, we're going to go through the four devices that if you are starting a smart home off, where you can start and then expand from there. So the very first device that I would recommend to start your smart home with, one, because of cost, Two, because of flexibility, controllability, and convenience, is a voice assistant. So Amazon Alexa is out there, and Google Home, Google Home Mini is out there as voice assistants. I'm preferential to the Amazon Echo ecosystem, and the reason being is that they have a really great developer program and platform that makes it really easy for people to develop apps on. And what that does is mean that you're going to have more apps in the Alexa store that are going to be tailored to the needs that you have to be able to control and interact with your devices. So even if you don't have any other smart home devices, you're going to find a lot of uses for Amazon Alexa without anything. But when you start to get the other smart home devices, you're going to be able to control them with Alexa, which makes your life even better. So with Alexa right out of the box, you're going to get a lot of features such as uh, Prime Music, which is going to allow you to listen to a variety of different music genres, artists, stations that are out there. And you can just say, Alexa, play music, whatever type you want, play pop music, rock, country, and it's just going to start playing music, which is really nice. And on the lower end, Amazon Echoes. Um, They actually have a headphone jack, so you could plug that into a traditional sound system if that's what you've got, and you're going to be able to stream it to your traditional sound system. Beyond that, Amazon Alexa has a variety of different features. So you can set timers, you can set alarms, you can get a flash news briefing and say, Alexa, play my news, 
And you can tailor that flash news briefing to the interests that you have, whether it be sports, news, business, finance, uh, or general, just fun stuff that you can do on Alexa. There's games on Amazon Alexa, and it's going to allow you to read any Kindle books that you have. It will actually read those to you um, at no additional cost. You can also get audiobooks, and it's going to read those to you. But if you've already got a Kindle library and you want to be able to uh, listen to those books, it's a really great feature. I think the feature that I end up using the most on Amazon Alexa is setting an alarm for the morning, as well as when I'm cooking. It is great to be able to say, uh, set a timer for five minutes if you're cooking something on the grill or you're cooking something in the oven. It is unbelievable how it will up your cooking game because you actually cook things to the right temperature based on a time rather than just, oh, you know, I think I've had it in there for a while. So I highly recommend Amazon Alexa as a device to get started with. Now, there are a couple different varieties of the Amazon Alexa devices and family. There's the Echo Dot, which is the lowest end uh, device, and that's under 50 bucks typically. There's the Echo Show, which is the highest end device and the largest device. It's got a video screen on it. And then there's a couple devices in the middle. Um, there's what's called the Echo Spot, which is one of my favorites because I think it's in the 100 to $150 price range, but it's got a video screen on it as well as uh, all the voice functions of the lower end Echo. What's nice with that is you can have it display a clock when it's not in use, but you can also use it for video calling if somebody else has in another Amazon Echo device. So what, as time goes on, I think getting a device that has the video screen in it and the camera capability, which the Echo Spot does have, uh, is really important. Now, there's another Echo device called the Echo Plus, which has a built-in ZigBee smart home hub to it, which basically means that it can communicate with other smart home devices such as Philips Hue. We're going to cover ZigBee, Z-Wave, and all the other smart home protocols out there in the future. Um, but for now, just know that that is an additional feature that is nice to have. If I had to make a recommendation to you between the two devices or three, four devices, what would I choose? I would start with the Echo Dot because you can always add more and it's the least expensive and you're going to get a taste of what Amazon Alexa can do and then you're probably going to get more. And if you're looking for the video functionality, then you want to go with the Echo Spot S like snake uh, for the video functionality. It's got a camera on it so you can communicate with another user as well as it's got a video screen on it so you can display all kinds of different stuff on there. News, you can see whatever videos Amazon has within that library and ecosystem. So if you wanna go the video route, go with the Echo Spot. All right, so the next device that we're gonna cover then is number two, Smart Thermostat. And for this, there's really two players that are winning the game at this. You've got Nest and you've got Ecobee. I've tried both. They're both great products. Really, this just comes down to design aesthetic and what you want to use in terms of an ecosystem and other devices that you want to connect. Ultimately, there's a lot of ways you can integrate either one that you choose with other devices. They both work with Amazon Alexa. They both work with Google Home. But what these smart devices are gonna do, these smart thermostats, is they are gonna provide you control from your phone. So you're gonna be able to go on your phone and turn up or down your heating and cooling. And if you have an Amazon Alexa, you're gonna then be able to say, Alexa, turn down my heating. Or Alexa, turn up my cooling. And it's gonna allow you to control it with voice. So they give you the functionality of being able to control it uh, with your phone as well as being able to control it with a voice assistant. Now, both of these devices have some different backend analytics, but those analytics are going to show you your energy usage. So weekly, monthly, you're gonna be able to look at your energy usage and see how much energy you're using. Uh, and some of them have features that show you energy usage compared to your neighbors, your neighborhood as well as it's just gonna show you your energy consumption over time. So if there's a cold day, a hot day, and you're using the energy more, it's gonna allow you to see that and you can adjust your behaviors. 
The smart thermostats also have an automated capability that's going to be able to turn down your energy or your heating or cooling when you're away at work, which I think is one of the biggest features of these smart thermostats. Generally operates with either a GPS on your phone or a motion sensor, and some of these have devices that are room temperature sensors or they integrate integrate with vent control. Um, So you can cool and heat a specific room to a specific temperature. There's also temperature sensors that you can buy for these smart thermostats to set a room to a specific temperature so that you're not just heating your whole house too hot, too cold. A lot of houses have cold spots and hot spots in them. So with these temperature sensors, that's a really nice add-on. It's going to give you more precise control over the temperature and temperature regions in your home. So the smart thermostat is going to definitely save you energy. It's going to give you additional controllability of your house, as well as it's just super convenient to be sitting on the couch and tell Alexa or Google Home to turn up or down your thermostat without getting up. Or if you're laying in bed, this is probably my favorite. I sleep a little bit hot, so I lay in bed, and before I go to sleep, or if I wake up a little bit too hot, I say, Alexa, turn down the heating or cooling to a specific temperature, which makes it so much more comfortable to sleep. I can't tell you the difference this made in my sweet sleep quality, but it was amazing to be able to adjust that without having to get up or out of bed. A lot of people live in multi-story homes, And walking down the stairs in the middle of the night, tripping over something, falling down the stairs, awful idea. So having the smart thermostat there is really amazing. Now, some of these smart thermostats actually also tie into a security slash safety aspect. Um, The smart thermostats out there, you can have them set. So if you have a smart smoke detector of the same brand, if it detects smoke or carbon monoxide, It will actually turn off your furnace until you uh, reset it, which is really nice because if you think about it and there was a carbon monoxide event that was generated by your furnace and the smoke detector, CO detector, detects that there is carbon monoxide, it's going to shut off that furnace so it's no longer generating smoke or carbon monoxide. And the same thing, you know, if there's a fire. So, That's a really nice feature that you wouldn't think a smart thermostat would have that they do that integrates kind of into the security and safety aspect of it. All right, device number three. So what is the number three device that you should get for your house uh, if you're starting off a smart home system? I'm going to tell you it's a smart lock. The reason being is it's convenient, it's easy to control, and it definitely affects your security and safety. So how many of you have been (laughs) locked outside because you gave your keys to somebody else or somebody else didn't give you keys to their place, whether you're a visitor, uh, a spouse, or girlfriend, boyfriend, uh, or your kids? So I know so many people who have been locked out of their house and they paid a locksmith to get back in. So it's also going to save you money because at some point in your life, this scenario will probably happen where you're locked out of your house and you can't get in, you don't have the keys, and you're going to have to pay somebody to get in, and it's a huge headache, huge pain in the butt. So it hits on that convenience factor. As well as with smart locks, you don't have to carry around keys anymore. So you're going to be able to just put a code in to get into your house, or you can use the app to get on. So the only smart locks that I currently recommend and I currently use are smart locks that have at least two methods of entry and those are fail safe methods. So you want to have a smart lock that it's great that if it functions on Wi-Fi, but also you need that keypad uh, on the front of the lock so that if the Wi-Fi goes down, you can just put your code in and it's still going to work like a normal keypad lock. That is very, very important because beyond having a smart lock to help yourself from not getting locked out, if you are dependent on Wi-Fi for that smart lock to work and you get locked out, well, you've just defeated the purpose and now you've got a piece of junk on your door and you still can't get into your home. So with the smart locks, it's really important that they have that keypad on the front so that you can get in 
no matter what. With the smart locks, there's a variety of manufacturers out there, but there's really two main brands right now that are kind of winning the smart lock war. Uh, Yale and uh, Schlage. Those two have been doing smart locks for a long time, and Yale just recently came out with a lock that works with Nest, which is a really great lock. It's called the Yale X Nest Lock. Schlage also has a lock out there that works with Z-Wave, Zigbee, or Bluetooth that has pretty much all the same features as this Nest lock. It just doesn't integrate into that Nest ecosystem as smoothly as the Nest lock does. I've had both both good locks that function as they're supposed to and will provide you convenience in your daily life. So when I said control, controllability, uh, you can obviously put in the pin number to get in, you can use the phone to get in, but another part of that is you can set codes for specific people such as a dog walker, a babysitter, a spouse, or a child, and you can see when those people are going to be coming in and out of your house. So you can see, did the dog walker really come today? You can have it set up to send you notifications for that, as well as you can schedule when those codes are going to work. So that is a super nice feature to be able to see when someone's coming into your house, who was coming into your house, and then make it so that your dog walker can't get in at 11 p.m. at night and throw a huge raging dog party, I guess. So that is a nice feature. You can make them those codes expire. So that's really, really convenient, as well as a control portion of the smart locks is a great feature. Now, on the security side, uh, the most important thing with a smart lock is that it has an auto lock feature. The reason being is that the majority of crimes that happen are crimes of opportunity when you're talking about home invasions and home robberies. What that means is people go to the front door, they see if the door is unlocked, and they walk in, and oh, now I can go steal stuff from the house. So that auto lock feature is incredibly useful. I know a lot of people don't lock their doors. I always lock my door. It's just been a habit. But some people just, they they don't lock their doors. They haven't their entire life because they feel that that's not an issue. Um, If you feel that way and you still want to leave your doors unlocked because your kids are running in and out, what you can do is just give your kids their own code. Give your neighbors their own code. So those people that you see or your friends or relatives that are coming by to visit you can all have their own code to come get in your house And it's essentially the same thing as having an unlocked door. It's just you know who's coming in that door. And it's not unlocked for the entire world. It's just unlocked for your friends and family, which is a huge benefit. The other biggest thing that I find is really, really just great about the smart locks is have you ever been like, okay, I'm going on vacation this is great. I've been pumped about this vacation for months. And you get to the airport or you get in the Uber and you're, or you're parking your car and you're like, did I lock my front door? The smart lock will allow you to check and make sure that your door is locked. And you can have that peace of mind. You can hop on the plane, know that your house is secured. And I think that in itself is worth the cost of getting a smart lock installed. So something super important for the smart locks when you go to install one of these is one, you got to make sure your door is compatible, but you also want to make sure that you put the time in to properly adjust how your deadbolt will latch with your door. That's really important because if you don't spend that time and make sure that it aligns correctly, you can get jams with these smart locks in the door where the door won't lock or it will stay locked. So you just want to make sure that you take the time to align everything. And if you need to widen the holes in the door that you do that to make sure that everything flows really smoothly and the door unlocks and locks when you request it to via app and or with the pins really smoothly. Super, super important with the smart locks to make sure you get the maximum functionality and the maximum satisfaction out of them. Number four, smart doorbell. 
Okay, and why do I say a smart doorbell versus a smart camera? Well, the smart doorbells function like a doorbell, but they also have a camera built into them to record what's happening at your front door. And the reason I say smart doorbell versus a camera the, as, as where to get started is because it provides dual functionality. It's going to do your doorbell as well as it's going to record video at your front door. But because of the placement of the smart doorbells, usually they're at like four feet, between three and four feet, it's going to get a really good shot of people's faces. So what people don't realize is with video cameras, a lot of times they're mounted too high and you can't identify someone's face because the angle is such that if they're wearing a hat or just because they're so high that all you see is the bald spot on the top of somebody's head rather than their face. And guess what? Police don't do lineups based on bald spots. They do lineups and can find people based on pictures. You've never seen uh, on the news somebody's mugshot that was how they look at an upwards angle of their bald spot of their head or the top of their cap for whatever major team they're wearing in a major city. Like you, you can't say, oh, uh, we have a recording of a guy with a Cubs hat on. Great. That just narrows down a couple million people we should be questioning right now for this video. It doesn't work like that. So with a doorbell, having it down lower is going to be able to make you see faces, which I think is super important. As well as the doorbell is set up in such that, you know, the number the, the number one thing that I think a lot of people are worried about in a major city, a major metropolitan area, and even in rural areas is Amazon packages or online packages. You have a $100 or a $10 or a $1,000 or a $10,000 Amazon package. I, I don't know what you're buying, but the person who might want to steal that package doesn't know. Was it your subscription of toilet paper that you get monthly for $10 that comes in a giant Amazon box? Or was that the set of $10,000 crystal plates that you had delivered to your door and is a great opportunity for somebody to steal? I don't know who gets you know $10,000 crystal plates from Amazon, but you get the idea. Um, a thief doesn't know what's in that box, but they get placed on your door and it's like just a tempting come steal me like invitation for someone to rip you off. So the doorbell can solve that problem because one, you're going to see the package that was delivered. You're going to have that recorded and then you're going to see anyone trying to come take that. But with the smart doorbells, what I really like in something that's interesting on these is that they have a light ring around them that you can have activated when there's motion or just all the time. And I didn't like this at first because I'm like, my neighbor's going to look at this and I think, what am I watching? Am I just, you know, that obnoxious person that has all the technology in the neighborhood and, and makes everybody look at it? But the light ring around the smart doorbells provides an active and a passive measure. The reason is, is that people have a tendency to look at that light ring and it has an active deterrent measure because people know they are being recorded. And I think that's something really important from the security aspect is that knowing you're recorded, you're probably not going to commit that crime. So that is super, super important. In a smart doorbell space, there's two big players. There's the Nest Hello doorbell. And then there's the ring doorbell, which has an option for a fully wired option or a battery powered function. Um, the Nest doorbell only has the wired function. So depending on what your use case is, if you've got existing wiring, you may want to select one over the other. Um, they both have a lot of the same features. And for these doorbells, you're going to get a little bit of recording that is always recorded, that's always gonna be on your phone. You're gonna get that motion activation, motion sensitivity, so you know when someone's coming to your door. They're also gonna record when somebody presses the doorbell button, which is really nice. And they have two-way communication. So if it is somebody from Amazon leaving a package, 
um, or UPS or, or whomever, you can respond to them if they say, hey, I need a signature. You can respond and say, uh, hey, just leave it at the door. It's all right without a signature, and then they can leave it. So that two-way communication feature is a really nice feature to have to be able to talk to people that are at your front door and ask what's going on, why they're there, who they are, communicate with them, uh, whatever you need to do. Beyond that, for the smart doorbells, both brands, if you want to record more than a couple hours of footage, are going to require you to get a subscription to their cloud recording service. And the cloud recording service is going to allow you to capture everything from 24 hours a day to five days a week to seven days, 10 days, 30 days, depending on what package you pick. I personally recommend either 24 hours or five days just because 30 days of footage is excessive unless you're a business looking to see for an employee that stole from you a month ago. So, you know, with the doorbells, you can get away with the 24 hours to five days uh, kind of thing because you're going to know if something happened in that time frame. So we've got four devices here. Our number one device was a smart voice assistant. So you've got Alexa or Google Play for those options. Our number two device was a smart thermostat. And you've got two choices there, Nest and Ecobee. Third device Smart Lock. And you've got two main brands there that we recommend, Yale and Schleck. And the last one is the Smart Doorbell. And for that, you've got two brands, Ring and Nest, that both provide the Smart Doorbells. We're going to provide links to all of these items in the show notes, as well as you can go to onehoursmarthome.com podcast and see all of these recommendations as well as more in-depth questions, FAQs, reviews, and guides at onehoursmarthome.com. Thank you guys very much for being here for the very first episode. If you've already got all four of these devices in your home, that is amazing. You are living the one hour smart home life. And I promise you that we will bring more advanced topics in the future, as well as we've already got advanced topics on the websites for you. That's onehoursmarthome.com. Now, if you're just getting started, what are you waiting for? Go out and live the smart life, get these smart devices, and get yourself hooked up. Because in the future, everybody is going to have this stuff, And you're going to wonder why you waited so long to make your life smarter. If you've got questions you want us to cover on smart home automation, go ahead and email us at info at onehoursmarthome.com. We always look forward to hearing from our listeners and providing topics that you want to hear about. Now, if you could do me one more favor, go ahead and give us that five-star rating in the App Store or give us a thumbs up and like and share the One Hour Smart Home podcast with your friends. Thank you for listening to the One Hour Smart Home podcast. We love our listeners and your feedback. Subscribe to our email list at onehoursmarthome.com where we share with you the best smart home technology, the latest reviews, tips, and tricks to make your life better. And with that, we'll catch you in the future. This episode was brought to you by the onehoursmarthome.com. Please help us find a veteran that we can help with a smart home. Email us at info at onehoursmarthome.com, subject line, USA, smart home. And if you want to support us, you can either buy our products, our smart home devices that we manufacture and design on our website, or you can go to Amazon and search one hour smart home for products that we sell there.